Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God for just another day He's blessed us with to, to be able to have another breath, another heartbeat. God is God is good. God is so good. We just need to give Him uh, praise, honor, and glory for everything He's done for us and kept us safe and the things up to today. So, so praise God. When you're watching this, it'll be Wednesday. So, you know He's got you through halfway through the week. So, before we get started tonight, let's just uh, let's uh. Just remember all, just remember all your friends and family. You know, remember the ones that are needing that prayer. Remember the ones that have asked you for prayer. Maybe we have let it slip our mind that that person has asked us to pray for them. Let's be vigilant and diligent to do these things, to pray for these people. And let us continue to be praying for the loss that God just sends that great revival and that we could be something or say something or do something to help these people be able to come to Christ and understand that Jesus Christ shed it all for them so let us let's just keep praying for our church for the church of the the whole uh, the whole world you know we need to get behind that there is one Savior and one church. A lot of you may just click off right now, but we need to get behind that Jesus Christ gave it all for every one of us. Jesus Christ gave everything, his blood and shed on the cross and died for our sins and rose the third day that we could have someone there next to the Father on our behalf. Let us remember that that is the church. Praise God. Let us let us go to the Lord in prayer real quick. Just uh, just continue to pray for our church. Just continue to pray for Pastor Sister Mary Jane. Pray God for Brother Kelly and the job that he done and been preaching last Sunday. So keep touching him and praying for him. I know the the devil tries to get on the people that are are teaching God's word because I have sure felt that this week. <laughs> But praise God, He is a mighty and magnificent God, and He will bring us through. So before we start here, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, once more, Father, for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Father, Lord God, that you sent your only Son to save our souls. Lord God, He, you, you nailed it all to a tree. You took it all, Jesus, for us. And what what we've done in this life, God, and and. and committing those sins, Lord God, that we should have never done, Lord, but your grace and your mercy, it took it all, Father, for us. And I thank you and I praise you for what you've done in that cross. Lord, help us, God, to be the men and women, God, that you've called us to be, Father, that we would say something or do something, Father. Lord God, that our light would shine for you, God. Lord God, it is not in the works, God, but, Father, that we would work for you. You, Lord, have given it all to us. And I ask God in each and every way, God, you touch our church family, Lord. You touch the churches around the land, God, Lord God, that we would focus ourselves on Christ. And, Lord God, that love would come out of it, but the correct love, Lord. God, the love, God, that it is for you, the love that it is for Jesus Christ. And to be of your word, Father, and to do the things, Lord God, that is fulfilling, God, in your word. Lord, touch us, guide us, and direct us, Father. Help us, Lord God, in this last day and time, God. Lord, let that revival come flowing through, Lord, that your word would go forth, God, in each and every way. And, Lord, just as you say, God, that it would not come back void. I ask you, God, to touch our church family, God. Anoint pastor, sister Mary Jane, Father. Lord God, they are so precious, Lord God, to us, God, to be able to come in the church, God, and know, God, that the word of God, the word of yours, Lord God, is being taught and being preached. I praise you for that. Help us, God, in each and every way in this last day and time, Lord, that we look unto you and we give our focus, God, unto you. Guide us and direct us in Christ's name, Father. I ask you, God, to remove me and put me aside, Lord. Father, for your honor and your glory, God, that I take nothing from. But, God, but learning, God, just as you would have me to. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So tonight, we're going to be in uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. And I'm going to be honest with you, it may be the shortest sermon that's ever been on here. Uh... 
but God has been dealing with me a lot today about this. And I thought it was in a different way, but I think I took it in another way, or the wrong way the very first. But that, that may be a, another one for later on down the road. But God truly hit me with this. And it's it's love. And I'm thinking, you know, all these people talking about love and all this other stuff. But why do you hear the preachers preach such hard messages? Why do you hear them right now that if you're going to the true Bible-believing church that believes the full word of God, why? Are they teaching such hard messages that, that make you want to curl your toes up? It's love. Let's get on into it tonight. Let, let me not just go through the whole thing real quick. <laughs> so Jeremiah chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 31. I'll give you a second to turn there. That's Jeremiah chapter 2 and 31. So in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 31, it says, O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. We're seeing this today, that the, the people are saying, I know best. Saying that I can be fine in this day and time. I can go out on my own and do these things. You know, last time we talked that it would get easier and easier for you if you went one way or another. If you chose to go the way it's talking about here, where... They think that the people think that they can get off on their own and be and do a better way. It'll be easier for them to start and end up in that direction. I'm not talking that it's going to be easy for you in the end. I'm talking about that it's easy to get astray. But in the same opposite way, the more you say yes to God, and the more you say, Lord, seek me, Lord, show me. And as we get on down in here in the, at the end of this message, you'll see it's even easier for the next time for you to say yes again. Same way it goes for that devil. You say yes to him once, it'll be a little easier and God's voice will start to fade. Same way for God. You say yes to God. God's voice is the one that you remember and know. And it's rooted in your mind and rooted in your head to be able to understand what he's saying. So, these people are all, all out and now they're saying that they are lords. We're lords. You know, we're, we're able to do for ourselves and fend for ourselves because, you know, we've got money. We've got these things. Nothing else. No, no worries. Let's keep going. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. If a maid was going to come in and clean a house, would she forget her broom? Would she forget her vacuum cleaner? Would she forget her duster? Could she still clean that house? If she didn't have any supplies at all to come in and clean that house. In that house, there was nothing in it. Nothing to help you clean. Could she still clean? No. She may make up something and cover it up, but she'll never get it truly clean. And listen here. In 33, Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. We are seeing it today. We're seeing it with a... The parties, we're seeing it by these uh, alphabet people, the LGB, whatever else that comes with it. When you, why, it says, why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love? If you're going to try to cut your own path to make your ways look even better than God's ways, it ain't going to work. 
because you're going to keep teaching people wicked ways and things. And at the end of the day, which is what I was going to teach on that I thought, God's going to say it's enough or he's going to allow you to keep your ways and let you go the way you want to go. That's not a good way. But listen to this. The whole meaning of this right here is you see the way that the world is going. You see that they're teaching this some sort of their form of what they think love is. But what love truly is, is the truth is what God would have you to do being the truth because God God give you the truth in this word in his in this bible right here God gave you the truth and by giving you the truth in that do you think he would go back and say something against what has already been said and done in the bible I think so Now of course God sent his only son Jesus Christ to die for our sins knowing that we couldn't make it on that law, knowing that we could not fulfill the law ourselves. So he sent one that was clean, clean, to take over, to be able to fulfill that law. That's the only way. Let's go down into Luke chapter 11 and verse 37. And in, um, in Luke uh, chapter 11 and verse 37, it says, and as he spake a certain phrase, a Pharisee besought him. Now, he's talking to the Pharisees now, and you'll see right here of what he tells them and what he shows them. This is love. If someone's doing something wrong at work, does your boss just allow them to just to keep continuing to do it and uh, and making scrap parts pieces and things such as that you know I work in work in the aviation industry and uh, I make jet airplane parts um, <laughs> there's no way that they're gonna take um, what you see that's flying in in the commercial air industry now one of those components in there that we make is a hundred and six thousand dollars there's no way that you're going to allow these people to continue to cut on that thing and scrap apart so many times like every night every day you're not going to allow them and keep watching them to do that you're going to either help them first and tell them what to do and coach them along the way just as what God would do is coaching you along the way in reproach and things such as that and helping you and making the ways easier for you to understand and you to be successful and to this is Jeremiah says an expected end he knows the ways that he sought for you praise God thoughts great thoughts that's the same thing. Now, there is a such point that you get to where if you don't want to continue to do this and you've sought that reproach and you continue to deny that, what happens is, is you're let go to go off and do your own thing. It's exactly what's going on in this day and life. That's why we need the preaching that you've heard here lately that God is sending. He's making you understand what true love is. Now, let's go on and get into this real quick and I'll show you. In verse 37 in Luke chapter 11, it says, And as he spake, a certain Pharisees brought him to dine with him, or besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner and the Lord said unto him now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of your cup and the platter but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness praise God he saw it about the clean that's inside not the clean that's outside 
in verse 40, Ye fools, did not ye that make that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such thing as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. He's talking about as you give out, you do the things in the outside, what you can see. If it's clean, you're clean on the inside. Not unless you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Not unless that you have asked for that forgiveness. Not unless that you have sought after the fullness of God. 42, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye have, ye, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Let us not do these things about to, to, to pass over judgment, to to give it to other people and shrug it off of ourselves and not look in the mirror first. Because right now, what I see in this phone that I'm recording this with is I see myself. And God has opened up myself and shown me that myself if I will seek Him and I will understand these things. That's what love's about. Love is about God being perfect. God knowing the right direction for you in your life. And for you to seek the perfectness of God. Because personally, I can't be perfect. I am not perfect. But I seek to be in the name of Jesus Christ, in the way of God. So the love of Jesus Christ that He shed for us and had His blood on Calvary that cleansed me allows me to be able to follow Him. Allows me to enter into the kingdom of God. When my last breath is on this life, I have that promise that when I breathe that next breath, if I don't breathe that next breath, where I wake up is in glory. Let us keep on here. Now this, this one really, I'm going to be honest with this one really, it hits home. So. 43, woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats of the synagogues and greetings in the market. You know, back row. Don't hide from what God has got for you. This is what I was talking about that really hits home. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not. And the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Someone can walk by us and walk right right by, right through, and not realize you are accepted into the kingdom of God. And don't realize that you show love in a Jesus Christ standpoint. They're not aware of you. They're not aware of Him. That is what we are here for. We are here to spread the love. Now, there is ways to go about it. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to go jerk a knot in somebody's tail, even though we'd love to sometimes. But just as what our situation is in this country right now, you know, the things and the decisions that they make, that they make to the wayside of things. But prayer you know, I'm, <laughs> they're seeing, they're, you know, even, praise God, what the Supreme Court's starting to do, and I hope they continue to do, in the ways that they they are after the godly way in, in, inside of abortion and things such as that. That's what we need to do. Sometimes it don't take a swift kick. Sometimes it takes us to as a loving shown as Jesus did right here because when he did this look at what they say at the very end in verse 45 and we're, we're going to come to a close here then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him 
Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also. Mm, I don't know about you. But we need to be like that. We need to make sure that we're not holding a double mirror. A glass pane that we can look through and look unto other people. We need to make sure that we look unto us. So you're seeing this. If you're watching this through Facebook, YouTube, however you get it. And you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. Or you are a follower of Jesus Christ. But you don't understand why in the world are they preaching so hard about these things. Why are they preaching about the end of the times. Why are they saying these things that are coming against us on this earth. Because the love of many shall wax cold in this last day. We need this. We need to accept it. Me as a church member, a church goer, and God filled, Holy Ghost filled, I need this. I need the reproach. I need the reminder that God is a just God. And how He loves is keeping His flock safe from that devil. That is exactly what He's trying to do. He's trying to keep you safe from that devil. If you will just listen. And you will ask him, Master, thus saying, Thou reproachest us also. Cleanse me too. Show me my faults and my failures and remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us be that church. Let us be the understanding. No matter who you are on here, let us understand this is what God wants for us. That we don't shrug this aside. That we don't... And we're not scoffers in these things that are coming, in these things that are our now. But let us praise God, looking that God will have another way for us and make another way. I love each and every one of you, and I pray that y'all have an utmost blessed week. And let's close with prayer real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you and thank you, Lord God, for your, your precious Son, Jesus Christ, Lord that gave it all for us on Calvary. Lord, let us make sure that we see the mirror. Lord God, and what's shining back if we don't like it, Lord God, that we hit our knees, Lord. Father, if you don't like it, let me change that. Lord God, if you don't like it, Lord God, that we hit our knees, God, seeking you, Father. Lord God, that you cleanse us, Lord God, and that you make us whole, Lord God, that we cut our hands to the plow and never look back to the things that it was for. And Lord God, if it's so, Lord, let us, Lord, Look unto you and look up unto the sky, Lord God, facing the east. And let us all be able to pray that prayer. Lord God, if it's so, please, Jesus, come quickly. Lord, that we can all say we are saved and sanctified, ready to go. Looking unto the east and ready for your son, Jesus Christ, to come get his church. Help us, Lord God, throughout the week, Lord, that we praise you and you, we thank you, Lord God. Father, no, no matter the things that come against us, God, we know, God, that the, that the enemy is raging, Lord, but we know that your power is far, far greater than that could, enemy could ever have. So let us submit ourselves unto you, Lord. And, Father, by submitting ourselves unto you, I pray, God, that we call unto your name in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, as your word says it, that that enemy and that devil shall have to flee. Lord, help us, God, to do these things and look unto you, Father, loving and understanding the true meaning of love. In Christ's precious and holy righteous name I do pray. Amen.